Hey, we've got the next set of notes, 2-3, glandular epithelium. Uh, glandular refers to gland, things that secrete stuff, and epithelium is because they're all derived from epithelial type tissue. So we're going to look a little more in depth as to what epithelia can do for you. So let's take a look at the definition of a gland. A gland is one or more cells that secrete a product. So any cell that can produce something all by itself and secrete it into your blood or into an organ is considered a gland. And the secretion is the thing that it squeezes out of itself. It's an aqueous fluid, which means it's got water as its main solvent, and it contains usually proteins or some combination of fats and oils and other things. There are two main types of glands that we find, endocrine and exocrine. So from the word, you can kind of get a basic idea that endo means inside. So these secrete internally to your body. Exocrine, exo, exit, means outside, and so they secrete externally to your body. So here's just some pictures of different types of glands, but we'll get into those in just a moment. All right. Let's start with the endocrine gland because they're pretty simple. Endocrine glands do not have any ducts. They don't have any tubes that the secretion comes out of. Not like your salivary glands where you have the saliva in a tube and it dumps out into your mouth. These guys, they just kind of ooze out their product. So imagine your uh, hypothalamus and pituitary in your brain just start sweating hormones. That's pretty much what it looks like your pancreas, your testes, your ovaries, your adrenal glands, your thyroid, they just kind of ooze out their product directly into the bloodstream. So what do they do? They produce hormones, amino acids, peptides, and steroids directly into the blood. Example, like I just said, thyroids, adrenals, ovaries, and testes. So they just kind of ooze. That's what you have to remember, ooze. You like that word? Ooze. I'm going to say that a lot, ooze. All right, so endocrine glands, they ooze. Exocrine glands, these guys are a little bit more detailed and a little fancier in their structure. And so these guys uh, are a tad more complicated. Exocrine exit, like we said, means that it exits out of either a body surface or something and it goes into an organ. So directly into a target organ or it goes into a cavity, an empty hollow place in your body. Uh, exocrine glands are the more common of the two types of glands. You have a certain amount of endocrine, but you have tons of exocrine glands. Of the exocrine glands, there's, again, two types. There's unicellular and multicellular. The unicellular ones are like this. It's made out of one cell with one nucleus, and that's his own little booger-making factory. These guys are called goblet cells. Due to the shape is like a goblet or an old-style, kind of like a wine glass almost. They refer to that as a goblet. Their job is to secrete mucin. Mucin eventually turns into mucus, which is boogers and nasty, gross stuff that you, you know, get back in your throat like that. And so that's what their job is to do. So imagine you got a lot of these up in your nasal cavity, down your trachea as well. And they also secrete into the intestines because your stomach needs mucus to protect itself from eating itself. So you got a lot of mucus in there as well. You gross boogers in your stomach. So they secrete mucin into the intestine and the respiratory tracts. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all they do. They're just a little, like I said, booger-making factories. And then we have the multicellular ones, kind of like this. So this was one cell, one nucleus. As you can sell, see that this is multiple cells, and they all work together to secrete. Now there's three main parts to a multicellular uh, exocrine gland. The first part is called the duct. And the duct is this tube right here that is just a passageway. Nothing exciting goes on there. The cells around it don't produce anything. They merely just provide a passageway out. And then we have the secretory unit, which is made up of cells that actually do the secreting. So they're the ones making the milk, making the oil, making the sweat. So they're doing the work. And then we have supporting connective, connective tissue, the yellow stuff, all the way around it that helps to give it its shape. Okay. Now, the multicellular ones come in two varieties called simple and compound. The simple ones have no uh, branching ducts. It's just a single tube, one duct, and it goes in a straight line. And of the simple glands, there's three types. 
tubular alveolar and tubular tubulo alveolar. They got really creative in naming that one. The tubular ones remind me of test tubes. So if you look down here, kind of looks like a test tube. That's a tubular. Forms tubes, it's slender, it's straight. They're really, really simple. Then we have alveolar, with, or otherwise known as asinar, which is kind of funny because it's got the word ass in it. And asinar looks like a small um, uh, round bottom flask. So it's got the little skinny tubes and then big fat ones right there. And then we have tubular alveolar, which is just a mix of the both. So it's got the nice single row of cells like this, but instead of big fat cells in the middle like this, they're little skinny cells, and they make this nice big open cavity like this. So simple ones, straight tube directly to the outside. Multicellular ones that come in compound forms, these tubes branch. So there's lots of little branches I should probably draw. But once again, I left my pen at home, so I'm drawing with my finger, so it's not going to look great. So single or simple, just go straight out, but a branched would go like that. That's a beautiful drawing right there. Let me get rid of that. Okay, um, for the multicellular, same thing. Tubular forms tubes. Uh, alveolar, small flasks. Tubular, alveolar mixes both, but the only difference being that they're branched as opposed to unbranched. So here is a picture kind of explaining. So we have the simple ones at the top, and this yellow area is showing, dang it, the light just went off. Uh, oh well, not like you guys can really see me anyway, being backlit and all. So we've got this simple uh, tubular, so it looks like a test tube, and it comes together and there's just one, um, one tube leading out. Simple branched tubular is the test tube is branched, but not the passageway. Simple alveolar, one passageway. Simple branched alveolar, there's still alveolar, but again, one branch. Now the compound, as you can see, if we follow the yellow, which are the tubes, there's one, two, three tubes, or the ducts. And so what we see is there's a branched one. And since the red area, the secretory unit, is looks like a test tube, that's how we know it's tubular. Then uh, alveolar, which is like a round bottom flask. And again, you can see that the ducts are branched. Ducts are branched. So if there's one duct, it's simple. If there's many ducts, quack, quack, then it is compound. All right. Exocrine glands, they, so they classify them by what do they look like? Are they branched or are they not branched? But they also classify them by how they secrete. How do they get their stuff out? So they're classified functionally, how they secrete, oh, there's lights, by uh, as either merocrine, apocrine, or holocrine. So they're based on how they secrete their product. So you're thinking, well, how many ways are there? Well, the first way is the holocrine way. Holocrine, this guy right here, A, what he does, I like the, oops, I like this guy because he, he, he explodes. He explodes. He um, makes his product, so these little polka dots right here, and the cell swells up, and then eventually it can't take it anymore, and it goes kablooey! and the cell just barfs its contents out all over the place. But then that's okay because right here we got mitosis going on and it's like, oh, you exploded, don't worry, I'll make you a new one. Not that big of a deal. And so all the cells are always replaced by mitosis and then we have, uh, you know, oil glands all over your face. So anytime you get oily, you know, right here, just remember that that was because a cell gave up his life for you so you could have nice shiny complexion. Yeah, right, whatever. So here's how I remember this one. Whole, the whole cell explodes. Holocrine. I know it's not W-H-O-L-E, but y you get the point. The whole cell explodes. All right, merocrine. Merocrine is the most common one that we find. So when in doubt, merocrine. You know, like, you know, when in doubt, see it out. With glands, when in doubt, it's merocrine. So merocrine are the most common glands that you find all over your body. And they are constantly secreting. And whatever they make immediately pops out of them. But the cells do not get destroyed. So they secrete their substance. It comes straight out of the duct. Nothing happens to the cells. They don't explode or anything. And it's just a constant flow. So you don't really think you're sweating right now, but you really are. So there's a little experiment we do in the next unit where just sitting here, we're going to put a card on our hand 
that identifies sweat changes colors when it, it comes in contact with sweat. And you'll be surprised just how much you sweat just sitting here. Um, let's see. So sweat is the most common example of merocrine glands. Uh, I don't know how to remember, you know, constantly marrow, bone marrow constantly makes blood, merocrine constantly makes sweat. I don't know. You know, whatever works for you. And then we have the apocrine. Apocrine glands are only found in your mammary glands. And what they do is a little bit of the cell breaks off and secretes its substance. So notice the cell doesn't explode like it does here, but it actually bits of the cell or fragments of the cell take off with the product in it and then kind of oozes and secretes out there. Um, so you can see right here, pinched off portion of cell secretion. So it's actually cell membrane wrapped around the uh, good stuff. So milk pretty much is the only one out there that they have figured out. They think earwax, but they're not sure yet. So um, so this milk comes out in little bitty bags. Kind of weird to think of it that way. Ooh, milk bags. Gives a whole different meaning to me. Sorry, that was inappropriate of me. All right, here's how I remember apocrine glands being mammary is because the A reminds me of the pointy bras that Madonna used to wear. And so apocrine, bra, milk, boobs. You get it. Okay, I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, bye guys.